So it's March, and it's the time for library book sales. Um, mine are a little bit later. They don't start until April, or two in April, and then there's one in May. So I haven't had a chance to go to any yet. Uh, what I wanted to do was wait and then show you everything I'd collected over the past few months, but then I figured no one really wants to see a video where I talk about 25 or 30 or 40 books. Um, or even two videos. So what I'm going to do is just sort of break them up. Over the past few weeks I've gone to um, a couple of bookstores and I think I have nine. Nine books. Yeah, nine. To share today. So um, once I go to the, the library book sales and bring that stuff home, then I'll do another one. But there's also something else before I get started with these. Um, to tell you about. I think I've talked about these in previous videos. Um, I'll just mention them one more time because I'm extra excited about them this year. Um, this right here is a bunch of get it on camera. <laughs> a bunch of brochures. Um, they're from various university presses. University of Chicago, Johns Hopkins, Princeton, Harvard, MIT and then a couple of miscellaneous ones that aren't really associated with the university at all. And because I know someone who can get me um, copies of these books, uh, they're called exam copies, um, what I do is I just order a few from the universities. And you're limited because of how inexpensive they are. Uh, most universities just allow you three every academic year, but they'll let you have them for three four, five, sometimes three dollars a piece. So what I did is I sort of went through these. For some reason I I get tons of these things. This is just a very, very small sampling of all the ones I have. I get probably three or four dozen a year. Um, especially in, in the spring when they're trying to uh, I guess clear out their stock or whatever. So um, I got three in the mail yesterday that I'd ordered, but I'm waiting on six more. So when I get those, I'll share those too. Really excited about that. Okay, so let me show you the books I've uh, gotten over the past few weeks. Uh, the first one is by the famous late evolutionary biologist Stephen Jay Gould. And it's uh, Wonderful Life, the Burgess Shale, and the Nature of History. And the Burgess Shale they found in Canada, um, when did they find it? Not too terribly long ago. And he just talks about how the fossils that they found in this huge fossil bed that they call the Burgess Shale can uh, shed a lot of light on how life, how early, early life evolved. Uh, the Burgess Shale is, a is in a limestone quarry that's about 350 million years old. And this is actually one of Gould's better known books. So this should be interesting. Next up is um, Isaiah Berlin, his book called um, Russian Thinkers. This is the book that contains one of his most famous essays called uh, the Hedgehog and the Fox. Um, if you don't know that, uh, know about it. One of, one of the two. I can never remember which one, but I think it's the fox knows one thing, and then the hedgehog knows many different small things, and then he talks about how, you know, various uh, influential thinkers and intellectuals have been either hedgehogs or foxes. There are also a couple of essays on here, uh, in here about. Uh, Alexander Herzen, the um, uh, the influential uh, writer, and Bakunin, the um, I think he was an anarchist, and then there are some about um, German Romanticism, the birth of Russian intelligentsia, Tolstoy and the Enlightenment, all of that good stuff. So, uh, Russian thinkers by Isaiah Berlin. This one has my half-price books receipt still in it. Um, 
I found a few on a few of these on the discount shelf. Actually, this was a dollar. Um, A.S. Buy It, uh, Babel Tower. I have Possession, Possession, the Possessions. Haven't read it. And then I read Angels and Insects. Probably, I think that's what it's called, Angels and Insects. A long, long time ago, maybe when I was still in high school. And I don't even really remember what it was about, other than I think it was set in Victorian England. But um, I always sort of associate a, associate A.S. Byatt with Victorian England and writing about sort of late 19th century England. This is actually about um, English society during the 60s and talks about um, aspects of, you know, the liberalizing culture and sexual revolution and all of that good stuff. So this is, I mean, I didn't even know that when I bought it. I just saw it and picked it up. So that should be different. I reviewed a book by Jerzy Kaczynski a few months ago uh, called um, The Painted Bird. And I didn't really like it. And <laughs> if you want to know why, you can go watch that review. But this, again, was on the discount shelf for a dollar. So um, I thought I would give him another try. It's called, I've never even heard of it. I've heard uh, The Painted Bird and Being There, but nothing else. Uh, this one's called The Devil Tree. So we'll see how that goes. Next is uh, Public Intellectuals, A Study of Decline by Richard Posner. And Richard Posner is actually a federal judge. Um, so is his son, by the way, whose, whose name I think is Eric Posner. He's a judge on the uh, U.S. Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit. And he's been there for quite some time. And he writes on everything. I mean, if you look at the, the topics of, of the books that he writes about, it's just everything from aging to cultural criticism to public intellectuals to law and history. And I mean, just really, really wide and expansive set of interests. But intellectuals and especially public intellectuals have been... Um, interesting to me for for a long long time so um and plus posner is kind of kind of a an old conservative curmudgeon -y type of guy so it might be interesting to see why he thinks the state of public intellectuals is in decline um next up is um, a book by William L. L. Shearer, by, uh, it's called uh, The Nightmare Years, 1930 to 1940. Um, this is only, I, is this volume one or two? I don't remember. I think it's volume one. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, of his, his trilogy of memoirs slash history of uh, basically the history leading up to World War II and World War II itself. He actually lived through it. I don't know if he was in Germany for the whole time, but uh, this is a first-hand account, even though it's not exactly a, a memoir. Okay, next up is an anthropology book. This is Anthropology as Cultural Critique, an Experimental Moment in the Human Sciences by George L. Marcus and Michael M. J. Fisher. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know too much uh, about what, what this talks about, except that I recognize the cover and I recognize George Marcus's name. And I knew that I didn't have anything by him, so I wanted to get something. It basically talks about um, the rise of ethnology in, in anthropology in the early 20th century and talks about sort of these unconscious assumptions that we have about other people and how we sort of uh, transpose them onto other people's systems of doing things and I mean it's just it looks like a highly theoretical book um,
taking account of world historical political economy, knowable communities, and larger systems. I mean, it's it's kind of a you know, it's not exactly hands-on and pragmatic, but um, theory has its place. So, okay. Next up is uh, the song of the dodo. Uh, Island biogeography in an age of extinctions by David Quammen, or Quammen. And I don't think I was familiar with the word biogeography until I saw this book. I actually went over to the science slash history of science section and was looking for something by uh, Quammen because he wrote a book about Darwin that I want, but I still haven't found at a reasonable enough price. But I found this instead. And then I looked it up on Goodreads, and it has a really good rating, over four stars out of five. So I thought I would read this instead. And, um, and I, I, I really know nothing about extinction patterns or didn't even know what biogeography was. So I guess now I'll learn a little bit about it. I think um, Edmund Wilson might have had um, something to do with uh, with this too, the the discovery of, of biogeography with him. Okay, speaking of, of books that I didn't really care for, um, a while back I also, this was one of my last book reviews, I talked about a book called uh, Visual Shock by Michael Kamen, and um, I didn't really like that book either, and if you want to know why, go watch that review. But um, on the discount shelf, I found another book by him. This is actually a series of lectures that he gave. It's called the, they're called the Curdy Lectures. They were delivered at the University of Wisconsin at Madison in October of 1985 and they were cobbled together into a book and the book is called Spheres of Liberty Changing Perceptions of Liberty in American Culture so um, I'll give them a second chance and see if that's any uh, more interesting than Visual Shock was because that was a horrible book so that's all for new books um, keep a lookout for another book haul that I'll probably have in no more than maybe, I guess, four to six weeks or so. Um, but also the books that I'll be getting from these lovely books. So, hope everyone has a good afternoon, and I'll see you guys later.